Hello YouTube and Game of Thrones fans. So this is it, the final episode of Game of Thrones, period. Unfortunately, if you're here, there's a good chance that you aren't too happy with the way Season 8 has unfolded for one of the greatest TV show series that has ever been produced. Did Bran tell me this? No. I envisioned the title of the video gave it away. Now, if you've watched my other Game of Thrones videos before, you're probably expecting some analysis on the final season and some predictions on how the final episode will unfold. This time, I won't be doing that. Instead, for my final Game of Thrones video, I want to share a vision with you. A possible final episode for the series that ties up the story and could reduce the backlash to the poor storytelling in Season 8, but likely one that won't be explored. Now, if you haven't watched up until the second to last episode, now's your chance to leave since there are going to be some spoilers leading up to this conclusion. So as you have watched by now, Danny has pretty much torched King's Landing, Cersei dies with Jaime under the Red Keep, the Hound in the Mountain fought to the death, and Jon and Arya escape the carnage and likely have to do some soul-searching in the final episode. Now at this point, there are limited options for the show's plot. We will likely see Jon responding to Danny slaughtering the innocent people of King's Landing, and if he does decide to take action, then we might actually have to see Jon or Arya decide to kill Danny. For the sake of drama, I'm pretty sure the show writers will likely go with Jon since it's the most tragic route. After that, then the show will have to address who will sit on the Iron Throne. That being said, I don't believe this is how the fans of the series want their favorite show to come to a close. After years of analyzing symbolism, foreshadowing, and other literary techniques, it appears the showrunners have deviated from the focus on the plot and really moved to the focus on the cinematography in this final season. Season 8 has yielded some of the best film shots ever displayed for television or even movies for that matter, but has been met with massive scrutiny for the butchering of the plot and the character development in the final season. But there was still a way for the writers to redeem their choice to focus on the cinematics in the end. So stick around for an alternate ending that will never be, but could have sewn up the loose ends of Game of Thrones and possibly appeased the fan base in the final episode. As the episode begins, the characters are appalled by the destruction of King's Landing. Daenerys makes her way to the Iron Throne, where she finds herself at the throne like the vision at the House of the Undying. Tyrion finds his way to the throne room and confronts Daenerys. She tells him she did what she had to do, and questions his loyalty. She tells Tyrion she knows he let Jaime go, and has Grey Worm take Tyrion into custody. She plans on executing Tyrion in the Dragon Pit. The episode progresses and the characters begin to regroup and continue examining the aftermath of the slaughter. Arya meets up with Jon, and then they both meet up with Sansa and Bran who are just arriving at King's Landing per Bran's request. Jon finds a minute to pull Bran aside and talks to him. Jon asks Bran why didn't he tell him about Daenerys and says she clearly is unstable. Bran replies that he couldn't tell Jon because they needed her to win the fight against the army of the dead. Jon is still confused and upset about what has transpired. Bran then tells Jon he needs to know something. This is the start of Bran's major revelation. So remember when Bran first became the Three-Eyed Raven? There was an abundance of speculation on the importance of his character moving forward. Bran could literally see all of the past and could seemingly catch glimpses of the future as well. His delving into the past is ultimately how he discovered Jon's lineage. However, Bran's ability has been irrelevant outside of that, and that is somewhat of a shame considering how impactful and seemingly important the scene with Hodor was. In that scene, we saw Bran actually had an influence on the past, but his influence had already manifested itself in the present. This is the underlying plot point in this alternate ending. Backtrack for a minute to the start of Season 6. Bran is viewing scenes from the past with the Three-Eyed Raven, when he sees Ned climbing the stairs at the Tower of Joy. As Ned climbs up the stairs, Bran calls out to him and gets his attention. I'm to go. Brother! Look at the reaction of the Three-Eyed Raven as Ned actually turns back like he heard Bran. Why does the Three-Eyed Raven look so emotional? Because in this alternate ending, we discover that unlike past Three-Eyed Ravens, Bran is not only able to view the past, 
but can actually influence it without disrupting the present. As we saw with the Hodor event, everything that Bran has done in the past has already manifested itself in the present. This might have caused the Three-Eyed Raven to become emotional because Bran's ability might be something that he couldn't do during his tenure as the Three-Eyed Raven. Imagine being able to see all of the past, but not being able to do a thing about it, and then seeing your successor even slightly influencing the past for the first time. It could even be said that the Three-Eyed Raven had future visions of Bran having this impact, but not believing it was possible since he had already tried before. So why does this matter? Well, along with his ability to see the past, we also know that Bran has visions of the future. However, unlike his past visions, his future visions are vague and ambiguous. In this hypothetical finale, we finally discover what Bran has been doing since he became the Three-Eyed Raven. Bran has been going back into the past to subtly guide the characters by influencing their thoughts to try to align or deter the characters from his future visions. He ultimately is deciding the future by influencing the past. The Hodor event was Bran's discovery of this ability as the viewer saw that Bran could impact the past with its consequences affecting the present. Bran tells us that he has been trying to perfect this skill and has tried to influence the past without completely messing with the minds of the people he is influencing. He further explains that he often used the guise of different religions to carry out his influences. This includes the whispers that are often heard in the books by the weirwood trees, as well as some of the visions and events experienced by the characters in relation to the Lord of Light. If your imagination with this hasn't already run wild, it will very shortly. Now that Bran has revealed what he's been doing, the show takes us to the individual scenes that Bran has influenced with Bran explaining all the things he has done. First, we see him whispering to a Night's Watch ranger to bury the dragon glass at the Fist of the First Men nearly a thousand years ago. We then flash back to Sam, Ed, and Gren finding the dragon glass in that same spot. He then explains that as he tried to make changes, mistakes were made. We then see the Mad King hearing Bran's whispers, implying it was Bran who made him mad. He also tells Jon about his mistake with Hodor, and how Ned at the Tower of Joy was the first one to give him hope that he could actually make a difference. During this time, it also cuts to a series of past events that are implied to have Bran's influence. He tells Jon that there is so much about history that was unknown, as the scene shows Bran present when the maester first inscribes the picture of the Valyrian steel dagger into the book that Sam finds at the Citadel. He is also present at the original construction of the wall. And then Bran moves on to his biggest revelation of all. He has been all the supernatural presences throughout the show, including the all-important Lord of Light. Bran starts off by explaining that he was using the Red Priests to channel his will and provide visions to helpers to make his influence more indirect. The episode flashes back to scenes where Mel and Thoros are having people look into the flames. He tells Jon about knowing that he needed Beric and Darien to save Arya in the battle against the White Walkers. He explains that he had already seen Beric was brought back to life in the past, so he felt he possessed the capability to revive him. We then see that despite it appearing that Thoros brought Beric back, it was actually Bran in the background. Thoros? How many times have you brought me back? It's the Lord of Light brings you back. I'm just the lucky drunk who says the words. How many? He also tells John that he saw them surrounded by White Walkers in the north and influenced Daenerys to save them with her dragon. The north didn't raise you from the dead. The Lord of Light never spoke to me. I don't know anything about him. I don't know what he wants from me. He wants you alive. Why? I don't know. It is at that moment that Jon finally discovers that Bran was the one who brought him back to life. It cuts back to Mel trying to resurrect Jon and Bran being the one to do it. Upon realizing that Bran brought him back, Jon gets emotional. Thank you for bringing me back. I wish I could have done more against the army of the dead. Bran replies, that's not why I brought you back, Jon, as the scene cuts away. More of the episode progresses and we see different characters interact. John regroups with Daenerys and the two have a conversation. John is distant from Danny and she senses his reluctance. She sternly tells him that the battles are over 
and now they can remake the world in their image. She tells John about Tyrion's betrayal and says she is going to execute him in the dragon pit. She deems John hand of the queen and tells him she hopes that he would like to rule alongside her. John seems uneasy about her conversation, but continues his charade until it seems that Danny is calm again. The conversation ends with John finally understanding that Danny is a tyrant. The episode continues, and we finally make it to the dragon pit. All of the remaining main characters are present, since it's one of the only places not destroyed in King's Landing. Drogon is perched on the ruins of the dragon pit. Grey Worm has Tyrion shackled in the middle of the dragon pit. Daenerys and Jon walk down close to Tyrion, and she begins making a speech to her army and the remaining citizens about rebuilding Westeros in her own image and bringing justice where it is needed. She tells Tyrion that treason will not go unpunished, mirroring Joffrey's words from season one. As Daenerys begins her sentencing speech to Tyrion, the camera pans to Jon, who hears whispering. He hears Bran whisper to him, Millions more will die, Jon. And it cuts back to the scene right before the Night King intends to kill Bran. This is what he was doing right before the Night King planned on killing him. It pans back to Danny, and as she tells Tyrion, And I sentence you to die, you can see Jon's sword plunge through her chest from the back. Drogon screams, and we immediately see Bran's eyes roll back. At that moment, Grey Worm yells and charges straight for Jon. Before he can get to him, he is met with a blast of fire from Drogon, who is now being controlled by a warging Bran. The other soldiers stand still in fear that Drogon will light them up. Jon cries over Daenerys' body as Ramin Jawadi's music plays in the background to the zoomed-in image of tears hitting her with Grey Worm's smoldering corpse in the background. Hmm, a sword plunged into a heart? Salt and smoke? Azora, hi, anyone? The scene ends with a fade to black. The scene then shifts to a future point in time. We can see King's Landing being rebuilt. We discover that Jon is being accepted as the King of the Seven Kingdoms, since most of the Lords of Westeros receive Varys' message. Jon doesn't want it. I don't want it. He meets with Bran, who tells Jon that he flew Drogon to Valyria. He says he shouldn't bother anyone there, and will keep an eye on him. You'll never walk again. But you will fly. John asks if Bran knew that he would kill Danny. Bran tells him that he was never certain, but the visions made him believe that he needed John alive, since he knew that John would never allow a world where so many innocent people were slaughtered. After their talk, we see the leaders of the different kingdoms are arriving at King's Landing. They all greet John as if he's the new king. John holds a meeting where they agree that the lords of the kingdoms are just representatives. The laws are set forth by the collective votes of the representatives, and they develop a form of democracy. The show then ends with Bran having a future vision of the children of the forest, fighting off the free folk who are invading their lands now that the White Walkers are gone. We catch a glimpse of the children of the forest once again holding a dragonglass spear tip by a captured free folk member as the credits roll. Thank you for watching this video, and thank you Game of Thrones fans for staying loyal to the show until the very end. If you like this alternate ending, make sure to share it with your friends and tune into HBO for the final episode of the Game of Thrones series that airs May 19th, 2019. Thank you and take care.